Full story time. Because who doesn't have time for a good story? No one. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Storytime Express. My name is Miss Rebecca with the Shaler North Hills Library. That's Miss Ingrid behind the iPad. Hello. My friends, we have a little theme going on today. And that theme is sea creatures. Sea creatures. Sea creatures because there's too many to choose from. And I also just couldn't dedicate week upon week upon week upon week to individual sea creatures. Right, right. So we had whales, we had sharks, and now we just have sea creatures. I'm very fascinated by the sea creatures on the cover of that weird sea creature book. That one has to be a fiction book because how could an animal look like that? I just read a wonderful book that was suggested to me by Miss Cara. Miss Ingrid, you would love it. Anybody would love it. It's called Harry versus the First 100 Days oh, of First yay. Grade. Oh, yay. She told me oh, about that. It is so good. Yeah. The author's last name is Jenkins. Ella, is it Emily Jenkins? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. And it's illustrated by Pete Oswald, who also did nice. Cool Bean, Bad Seed, yeah. all those. It is so good. But I love Emily Jenkins. It just made me think, this is called Weird Sea Creatures. Sure, this is weird. But they discuss in a morning meeting in Harry's class that weird isn't always a wonderful word to use. Yeah. Sure, some things are weird. But sometimes weird could be used as like wrong. Like that's wrong. That's right, weird. Right, right, right. And right. that's... That's that's mean. That's not very right, nice. Right. So perhaps unusual sea creatures would be Un- better. Right, right. You know, just replacing weird with unusual. But I mean, some things are weird. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's interesting. Words words matter and so words much. are tricky. Like for example, this Jake guy running with Jake, he is he's he lives in England and he's He's helping coach me through some, hoping to train for, I'm training for a half marathon for next May. That's wild. And yeah, but he had a guest on the other day and she was talking about a terrible time she got in an Olympic trial. I think it was an Olympic trial. And it was, and here she'd had her COVID shot two days before. Oh, and she, she probably felt like a well, little bit of maybe not so hot. She felt pretty bad and she said, so I'm just going to use that as an excuse. And he's so gracious, and he was like, wait, just hold up just a sec. We want to, might, might that just be a reason, not an excuse? Because excuse kind of has sometimes a connotation that like, oh, it's something you made up, or it's something that's not. That's not really why, but that's really what I'm going to say it was. But maybe having a COVID shot two days before your trial time is, is, a, reason. is a reason. Right, ah. right, right. And it's, I mean, we all have excuses sometimes, too. Yeah. But, but a, you know. So I was like, wow, that's true. I mean, how many times have I said, well, I'm using that as my excuse. But it was like, no, it's actually because, like, my head fell off, so I really can't be there. Yeah. Or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's good. And and you know what the bottom line is? Words so matter. And so be kind when you use them. If you, you know what? be thoughtful. And if you're not sure, think, hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me think about that a little bit more. Like what people want to be called. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like... Yeah. So okay. maybe these sea creatures are like, yeah, I'm a weird sea right, creature. Right, 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 right. Like, I know I can be a little, like, weird and wacky weird. sometimes. hmm I'd but, rather be weird than boring. Yeah. But if somebody maybe said, like, your face looks weird. Right. That's not very, right, no. right. No. That's... Unless you're saying, I'm trying to make a weird face. Does it look weird? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's so. not weird. Your face looks weird. So... Another deep dive with Miss Ingrid and Miss Rebecca yes. during Storytime Express. Yes. My friends. Let's, which one are we going to do? Well, we're going to start with the House for Hermit Crabs. Oh, cool. Now, I know that's fiction, but. It, it's absolutely fiction. But what happens in it. Could happen. Is what really happens. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a fiction story. Right, 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 right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, you know, let's just get on with it. And the narwhal book is is fiction because narwhals aren't real. No, narwhals are real. But I didn't think they were. Now, Miss Ingrid, yeah. this is a perfect example 
of why words matter. Yeah. Because you just said narwhals aren't real. And that mm -hmm. is not true. I know. Narwhals are real. But, mm -hmm. my friend, suppose you just said narwhals aren't real and then somebody, whoop, turned their computer off. Or whatever device they're watching this on. Right, and right. they just started going on about their day as if narwhals are not real. Which they are. That would be especially problematic if they were a narwhal. Because then we're talking existential crisis. And we have enough of those on our hands, don't we? Yeah. So I would ask that that was your final falsehood of Storytime Express. Okay. Promise? Today. We'll have to redo this promise each and every time now. Okay. Because you just had to say a sassy comment. <laughs> and okay. and no. This is kind of like Miss A and Miss Rebecca's morning meeting. <laughs> well, some meetings need to happen and some don't. Let's get on with it, my friends. Yes. A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle. And here's this. I really have to remember to do this because a lot yeah. of times the back of the book mm -hmm. is just as lovely as the cover. Yeah, yeah. And it really gets the flow going. Mm -hmm. And we've got these. I forget what they're called. Maybe fronts pages. Yeah, fronts piece. What's fly leaf? The fly leaf is that thing that's like taped over there. Like that has the, yeah. yeah. I learned this in library school, but clearly yeah. I don't remember any of it. It was a while ago. A house for hermit crab. Here's a few little factoids. Hermit crabs live on the ocean floor. Their skin is hard, except for the abdomen. That's in this, like your belly area, which is soft. To protect this soft spot, the hermit crab borrows a shell and makes it his house. Then only its face, feet, and claws stick out from the shell. That way it can see, walk, and catch its food. When a hermit crab is threatened, it withdraws into its shell until the danger has passed. Which, you know, people can do that people too. People can do that too. I was going to say that's kind of like a metaphor for human behavior. I was going to use the word metaphor, but I didn't know if I was using it properly, so I, I just said so. a thing. Did you use like or as? Because then it's a simile. Yeah, I know a simile is like yeah. her ass, but I just wasn't sure you did, it was I think a it's a metaphor, yeah. Time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and onto the ocean floor. But it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wiggling and waggling about inside it to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looked so well, so plain, thought Hermit Crab. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth, back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It is so plain, it needs you. How come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and boop, put it on his shell. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the sea floor. How handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, signaled a little sea star. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. See, there's the sea anemone and the sea star. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. 
How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. And gingerly, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on a shelf. In June, Hermit Crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went, picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hardworking you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean up my house? I would, offered one of the snails. Happily, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on a shelf. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? Uh, I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near its shell. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. Ooh, it's so dark in here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, cried the sea urchin. In September, oh. Hermit Crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lanternfish, and it swam over near the shell. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit Crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, cheered Hermit Crab. Mm, but. but in November, Hermit Crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little, over the year, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon he would have to find another bigger home. But he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They are like family. How can I ever leave them? In December, a smaller hermit crab passed oh. by. Um, I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? I have outgrown my house too, said hermit crab. I must move on. You are welcome to live here, but you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. Following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wide, wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain, but sponges, he thought. Barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. He was like a house flipper. The end. A little bit. You know what? I realized I'd never read that book. Really? Yeah. I, that's And the Megan McDonald, Is This a House for Hermit Crab? That's more... Remember how I said at the beginning, I said that's fiction, but it could be nonfiction? Yes. I mean... The, that that's super fiction, but the Megan McDonald one, I mean, it's it's more nonfictiony. Yeah. You know what I mean. So I do apologize for that because you know I like to speak the truth. That was really fictiony. Wow. A house for Hermit Crab. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and I, but I had not read the story. So yeah, because I would normally just always tell the truth.
I mean, hermit crabs do grow out of their shells and change. Yeah, but that was probably about so that's the probably only real happens. thing in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, yeah. like, walk along the ocean floor. Yeah, yeah. But they probably don't talk to people. They might! They don't. They weren't talking to people. Right. That's true. They probably don't talk to other. It, were, it was interspecies But they might have, communication. though. Maybe they do. My friends, our next tale of a sea creature is Octopuppy. By Martin McKenna. Hmm. Look, it's a dancing octopuppy. Look at the puppy in full. Is that octopuppy dressed as Queen Victoria? I think so. Painter, alien, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, the rest of us will be forgotten. Never Judy. And knock off Captain Underpants. Apparently. And this is exactly why Frank Sinatra said that about Judy Garland. Because, yeah. The Octo Puppy yeah. by Martin McKenna. A tribute to Judy Garland. This is fiction and it is not a tribute to Judy. Well, but it's Just before this, okay. our first story, yeah. you had promised not to tell any other untruths this Storytime Express. Well, I felt like I kind of no. like my first one was a mistake because I okay. Right. Is this is is the Octo Puppy a tribute to Judy Garland? It isn't, but it's a Is it a tribute her. to Judy Garland? Yes or no? Why are, yes can't or no. things be non dualistic? Yes, yes or Isn't no. Isn't that the way we're supposed to be? Yes or no. What would Richard Rohr say? Yes or no. No. He would say Ish. answer the question. <laughs> Pastor Ingrid. <laughs> Edgar wanted a dog, but Edgar didn't get a dog. He got Jarvis. What did Edgar say? Oh. At least he's being open. He's not. Jarvis couldn't do anything a dog could do. But Edgar couldn't deny that Jarvis was clever. Ooh. Dog show next week. Super prizes. In fact... Jarvis was too clever. Edgar thought maybe with training, Jarvis could learn to lie down. Think he's going to do it? He can do so much more. Well, After reading a book and lighting a candle, that's pretty impressive. He lied down. And gathering his bedclothes. Or maybe play dead. Let's see. Mm, what's can he, he going to do? Can what's he do he the simple do? playing dead? Do? But Jarvis oh, always, my goodness. always went too far. He's brilliant. Ooh. And that drove Edgar crazy. No, 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 said Edgar. Edgar's idea of an octopus is too small. Until finally, sit. Is he sitting like a puppy? Yeah. Maybe Jarvis really could be more like a dog. On the day of the big dog show, however, Jarvis could only be himself. Good for As him. we all good for should him. just be ourselves because we are good. Yes. Edgar was so embarrassed. I think Ed Edgar needs to think of I think something. Edgar's is the one with the issues. Do they look like a happy duo? No. I think it's because <gasps> Edgar really wants to... I'm sorry I was a bad dog. Love Jarvis. Well, that's because, like, what's, he's not what's, a dog. What's happening? Oh, yeah, he's, like, going down the toilet. But when Jarvis decided to leave, Edgar knew he had been wrong. Okay. Jarvis wasn't a dog. Right. He was the best octopuppy in the world. Yeah, look at that, dude. Look at everything he did. Are these memories or are these things that he could have? He feels like he could have done in the future. That he did. Wow. So instead of and chasing the cats, dog would do. he look, rescued them. Look at that. Look what this dog did with the sausages, but look what Jarvis did. Wow. <gasps> look at what octopuppy smells, but look what a dog smells. Yeah, what's up with that? Chasing the mailman. And instead, using his medical skills because he has eight tentacles. We made an octopus this week in art. 
<laughs> That's, we were sticking with the theme, you see. Same week. Edgar wanted Jarvis to come back. He went to look for him. He even made a speech on TV. I was wrong. He was my friend. But Jarvis was nowhere to be found. Oh, Jarvis, I'm sorry I was so horrible. Please come home. Jarvis, come home. Pass it on. 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 That's not Jarvis. Think they're going to send a message? If they do, we've learned something about the differences between the way animals and people communicate. That was all that Jarvis needed oh. to hear. Jarvis! Oh. oh. Welcome home, Jarvis. Oh, that's nice. And they both lived happily ever after. That's cool. That's a good story. I think so. But I thought it was interesting that the an the underwater creatures were able to play telephone successfully. Have you ever played that telephone game? Yes, it's where, terrible. Uh, dude, it's terrible because usually, I mean, by the time it passed through, if it passed through that many humans, it would come out being like so garbled. You know, pop tarts or trees. <laughs> That's exactly. And, and Jarvis would still be swimming around in the ocean. Yes. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. Right. Right. My friends, our next story is not quite narwhal by Jesse Seema. And this is a fictional story about a real animal. And it's love for Judy Garland. It might be. Is it? Probably not. Is it? I don't know. I'll know at the I'm end. telling you it's not. Okay, it's not. Not quite narwhal. It might. Like, there might be a... I mean, we don't know how Norwell really feels about Judy just because he doesn't write a whole book. Of... I'm never getting the globe. Not quite Norwell. This is Kelp. Oh, Hi, what Kelp. a great name. Kelp was born deep in the ocean. He knew early on that he was different from the other Norwells. His tusk wasn't as long as everyone else's. He had different tastes in food, and he wasn't a very good swimmer. But his friends didn't seem to mind, so Kelp decided he wouldn't either. That is, until he was swept away by a strong current. Oh. I wish I was a better swimmer. himself at the surface, closer to land than he had ever been before. <gasps> High up on the cliff, he spotted a mysterious sparkling creature. It looked so familiar. It looked like Kelp. There's Kelp. There's the creature. Kelp swam toward land as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that he could catch up with the creature that looked just like him. When he finally reached the shore, Kelp felt a little bit anxious. He had never left the ocean. He was nervous about walking for the first time, but the land creatures made it look so easy. Well, that's because he has six legs. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Eventually, he got the hang of it. Mm. Now look at this too, my friends. Crab, crab, sideways. Yeah. yeah. Frog, right, hops. Right. Turtle. Cup was able to learn the turtle took it nice and slow. Mm. Oh, I didn't even think about that. You gotta learn sometimes. Yeah. You gotta go nice yeah. and slow. Right. Everything on land was strange and beautiful, but also kind of scary. Kelp began to think he might never find the creature that looked just like him. But as he stumbled out of the forest, oh. land narwhals! <gasps> um, actually, we're unicorns. And by the looks of it, so are you. Whoa. Kelp had never heard of unicorns before. They taught him all sorts of new things about his tusk. Uh, we called them horns. 
Wow. They introduce him to unicorn delicacies, unicorns, and they showed him how to gallop. There was no doubt that Kelp was, in fact, a unicorn. He was having so much fun that he didn't want to leave. But then he remembered all of his friends under the sea. Mm, that's cool. Kelp missed them terribly, so he said goodbye to the unicorns and returned to the ocean. Come back soon! See, that's cool. That's Kelp satisfying. swam toward home as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that the narwhals would still like him now that he was a unicorn. When he finally arrived, Kelp had butterflies in his stomach. <gasps> Welcome home, Kelp! Kelp took a deep breath and told his friends the news. <sighs> um, it, it turns out I'm not a narwhal. Of course you aren't. I'm a unicorn. We all knew that. They took it quite well. Kelp was happy to be home, but now that he experienced life on land with the unicorns, he couldn't seem to forget them. Did he want to be a land narwhal with the unicorns or a sea unicorn with the narwhals? Kelp couldn't decide. But then he realized that maybe, maybe, just maybe, he didn't have to choose. That's wonderful. What a great story. And look, what do you see prominently featured in that page? You're going to owe me an apology. Rainbows. Rainbows, somewhere over the rainbow, Judy Garland. This book is a tribute to Judy Garland. I'm a unicorn. Huh? It's a rhinoceros. Yep. Or is it a... Triceratops. Unirocerus. Unirocerus, yeah. yeah. My friends, it's time for our final story. It is our nonfiction selection, Weird Sea Creatures. And weird is meant in the weird way, not the negative way. By Laura Marsh. I think we just read a, a nonfiction by Laura Marsh. I think we did too. Was it the koala one? I don't know. Could have been. Nonfiction, we've got our table of contents. So say we just wanted to know about deadly dangers, we know we could just go right to page 20. Strange but true. Many strange sea creatures live in the ocean. Some are beautiful, some are ugly, some are cute, and some are scary. Weird sea creatures are strange for a reason. The funny way they look and the strange things they do help them live in the ocean. This is a balloon fish. We used to have a... Um, like a petrified one of those in our house. Was it spiky? It was really spiky. And my dad used to chase us around with it. Fun time. Yeah. Survival skills. Some sea animals live in the shallow ocean waters. Some live in the deep ocean. The ocean can be a hard place to live. Deep areas are cold and dark. It can be hard to find food. And the ocean can be dangerous. There are many predators. Any animal can quickly become dinner for another animal. This is a diagonal butterfly fish. These are snorkeling humans. Sea creatures have special skills that help them find food. Whoa. They also have strange body parts that can help them hide and stay safe from other animals. How weird are these sea creatures? Whoa. Let's find out. A Dumbo octopus finds food on the ocean floor with its large eyes. It, it doesn't really look like an eye, but it. Yeah. But as we know eyes to be. Yeah, but because they're not octopus, really weird. They're just it's different. Like totally. Right, that. right, right. You know. A leafy sea dragon blends in with the seaweed around it. That's so cool. Look at See? that. See. Yeah, it totally looks like a mythical dragon. A moray eel, sharp teeth catch prey. Ooh, <laughs> we don't want your toes stuck in there. Hide and seek. Camouflage helps animals hide from their enemies. Looking strange helps them blend into the plants or water around them. Camouflage also helps animals catch dinner. Do you see the stonefish in the picture? Eyes, mouth. 
Most fish don't because it looks like a rock or coral. When they swim too close, the stonefish springs from the ocean floor, grabs dinner in a flash. <laughs> Big eyes. The deep ocean gets very, very little light. Many animals that live there have large eyes. Big eyes help creatures see in the darkness and find prey. This viper fish used its big eyes to spot a hatch fish. Wow. Dinner time. Wow. The hatch fish uses its own large eyes to find tiny shrimp to eat in the dark sea. They're a little scary looking. Love it. They're like, can cool you imagine if you though. opened like your front door and were like, Yeah, oh. they're pretty cool. They're cool. Making light. Many creatures in the deep dark sea have a special trick. They make their own light. This is called bioluminescence. That's light that an animal makes by itself. Some sea creatures use their own light as a flashlight to find prey. Light can draw prey toward an animal too. And light can surprise enemies so an animal can make a quick escape. This is a comb jelly. The black dragonfish has funny patches that glow in many places on its body. That's a patch that glows. I just think that's so neat. Expert food finders. Whoa! Some animals have wacky body parts that help them catch meals. This is its mouth. Oh! This is a gulper eel. This is its tail. The gulper eel has a super long tail. Prey comes closer for a better look. Dun, 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 dun. This eel's giant mouth opens wide. It can eat an animal bigger than it is. It can't be picky. In the deep sea, the eel must eat whatever it can. Excuse me, whatever it can find. Wow. Oof. The tiny cookie cutter shark locks onto its prey with strange sucking lips. Its sharp teeth sink in. They leave a bite the shape of a circle. That's why it's called a cookie cutter. Oh. Look at the cookie cutter sharks feeding on a dolphin in this illustration. Dude, I don't want to look at that. See the little marks there? Aww. It's an illustration. I know, but it makes picture. me sad. Circle of life. I know. Bite marks. Sharp teeth. Oh, look at this thing. This is an anglerfish. An anglerfish has its own fishing pool called a lure. The lure glows and other fish want to know what it is. When they get close enough, <coughs> The anglerfish eats them. Deadly dangers. Bumping into sea, some sea creatures can be bad news. The yellow sea anemone looks like a pretty flower, but it has stinging parts that have deadly venom. When a fish is stung, its muscles stop working. Then the anemone eats the fish. <laughs> venom a liquid some animals make that can cause stinging, pain, or death. The box jellyfish is one of the most dangerous animals in the world. It has arms called tentacles that grow up to 10 feet long. The tentacles deliver a painful, deadly sting. This lionfish has crazy spiky fins, but you wouldn't want to touch them. The fins on its back are sharp and can sting you. Strange senses. Some animals near the ocean floor don't even have eyes. They can't see their food, so they use other senses to find it. A sea cucumber can feel tiny pieces of food stuck to its tube feet. It curls its feet in and licks them clean. Whoa! Ah, and this is a sea cucumber. This is a hagfish, and it has a super strong sense of smell and touch. It can smell food that's fallen from higher up in the ocean. It also uses feelers to find meals. Super subs, not the kind you eat. How do we know about weird sea creatures in the deep ocean? People can't dive deep to see these strange creatures. It's too cold and dark there. And the water pressure is strong enough to <coughs> crush a person. But humans can use machines called submersibles to explore the deep ocean. Sometimes people control them from far away, like a remote controlled car. And sometimes people ride instead. 
Submersibles collect oh. information. They have lights and special tools. They take pictures and they gather plants, rocks, and animals. Scientists use submersibles to find the weird creatures shown here. And there are probably thousands more that have not even been found yet. This is a blobfish. I love him. And these odd tube worms live on the bottom of the ocean. They can grow to be eight feet tall. I love the blobfish. Do you think, but I am I bet that's, I mean, it looks like a nose and a mouth and stuff like that, but I, I'm i sure it's not. You know what I mean? But I think that is its mouth. Its mouth. Do you think those and are I its think eyes? those are its eyes. We have a book with the blobfish on the cover. So cool. My friends, those are some weird sea creatures and, and some regular sea creatures that are fictional characters, you know, but. Yeah. But yeah, my friends, thank you for joining us for story time. Please shut your eyes. It is time for your make-believe stamp. Please get your stamp out. Is it a blobfish? Yes! Is it a narwhal? Is it a unicorn? Is it octopuppy? Is it a cookie cutter shark? Put it in your make-believe ink. Pop it on your arm. Mm. Mm. It's hard to pick, isn't it? It really is hard to pick. I picked an octopus. Dude, that's cool. Did you pick octopuppy or just an octopus in general? An octopus in general. That's cool. My friends, thank you so much for spending your special time with us. We'll see you next time. Do you want to hear what I picked? What did you pick? I picked octopuppy going out for Halloween as a blobfish so he can take his costume on and put on and I can have both. <laughs>